Labor Rights Week, we have Maria Ruiz, that she came from the consulate. She's a representative from the Mexican consulate. And a little bit about her. Let me just tell you a little bit about her. Uh, she is originally from Guerrero, Mexico, holds a bachelor's degree in international relationship relations from the National Autonomous University of Mexico, uh, specializing of political and diplomacy. She has pursued postgraduate. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I get out of my breath. Uh, postgraduate courses of strategic strategic aspect of the United States, Canada, and Mexico relationship, sustainable development and international law for refugees and international protection in, in Mexico. Maria moved to Utah and led the community affairs departments at the Consulate of Mexico in Salt Lake City for three years. Her focus uh, was on implementing programs in health, education, and finance. Uh, to support Mexican and Hispanic community integration and em empowerment. Currently, Maria is a member of the Protection Department where she assists Mexican nationals with lo uh, locating missing re re relatives, sorry, repatriating minors and vulnerable individuals, advising on civil affairs and securing immigration relief for surviving in domestic violence and other crimes. She also facilitates processes such as repatriating human remains, applying the humanitarian parole with the CBP, and reuniting families, particularly minors, among other duties. <laughs> Please welcome Maria Ruiz. <laughs> I really got impressed about all the work that you do, guys. So, um, thank you. Thank you for inviting us and giving us the opportunity to be here with all of you. Uh, it is a great opportunity to uh, share with you what we do at the consulate for uh, Mexican community in Utah. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure that some of you know what does the consulate do in Utah because we are located in Salt Lake City downtown. But uh, I wanted also to share with you that we provide services for those residing uh, in the western part of Wyoming, right? Yes, and as you mentioned already, uh, I'm going to talk about what we do at the Protection Department. Okay, so who we are. Uh, the Protection Department is one of the four departments, departments within the Consulate of Mexico. We have the documentation so where people go to get the Mexican passport and consular ID. Also, we have a cultural department and the community effort a first department uh, that I was in charge in the past. And um, our main purpose uh, is to protect, pro uh, promote, protect, and defend Mexican citizens' human rights here in Utah and in Wyoming as well. And um, one of our main functions is assist Mexican nationals with legal issues in the following areas. Uh, labor, family law, migration, administrative, human rights, trafficking, and criminal um, criminal issues as well. And our actions, um, we visit Mexican nationals incarcerated, and we help them contact their families and also their lawyers. And we have an agreement with uh, DCFS. So uh, all the time when they have a minor uh, and um, their parents are Mexican of one of them, uh, we are able to follow up on minor custody processes, right? And we also, as you said, um, assist people when um, a relative passes away. So 
we work with some funeral homes, uh, which provide uh, cheaper services and know the process to take those human remains to Mexico. And um, of course, you know, sometimes um, we face um, difficult situations, financial situations. So we are able to uh, assist those uh, in vulnerable situations uh, through providing uh, financial aid. And um, in coordination with the Ministry of Health in Mexico and the, some local um, hospitals as well here in Utah, we are able to repatriate uh, Mexican patients to Mexico so they can get medical treatment in Mexico. And sometimes, of course, uh, we assist uh, victims of crime and we are able to guide them in, in the process of reporting uh, to local authorities, uh, also um, referring them to local organizations so they can get uh, psychological therapy and other services. And sometimes um, given all that uh, uh, if they were victims of domestic violence or any um, crime, they might uh, apply for um, any immigration relief, such as the, the VAWA or EU visa. Okay, and this is one of my favorite phrases. <laughs> uh, for us, it's important that people know that regardless of their immigration status, they have rights. So we visit uh, migrant workers at, the wor at their workplaces. Uh, so because we consider that it's really important that they know what is the minimum wage mm -hmm. here in Utah, actually one of the lowest in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we also highlight that uh, they should receive uh, their salary on time uh, and it should be, you know, um, um, uh, it depends of, of the, the, the kind of uh, work that they do, right? But they should receive the salary on time uh, for the number of work or hours worked. And of course, many of them are Spanish speakers. So um, we have the right uh, of getting uh, the training at work in our native language. And because it's important that we know what are the potential hazards and how to prevent accidents at work, right? And it is um, the employer's responsibility, you know, of providing a workplace clean and safe, right? And also um, employers should provide you uh, with safe tools and equipment in case that they don't do it. Uh, they can call even without providing uh, their names, uh, OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, and that they know that in case that uh, any accident at work, um, they must receive compensation, right? And discrimination at workplaces is illegal. So, uh, we highlight that and provide information about um, what they can do in case of suffering from discrimination, uh, violence, or sexual harassment, right? And one thing that um, we have noticed is that they ignored a lot about what is, uh, for example, sexual harassment, right? That, that it doesn't have to be sexual, right? And um, that it can come from coworkers, um, clients, customers, um, immediate supervisor, you know, and it ranges uh, from unwanted touching, um, inappropriate comments, jokes, right? Or sometimes <laughs> given the option of uh, getting a promotion in change of, um, any sexual favor, right? So they can call to the US um, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. <laughs> yeah, that you already know about that, right? 
And also, uh, it is essential that they know um, information about the, the employers, right? The, the, the company's name and the address in case of any accident. And um, especially here in Utah, the, to me, <laughs> it is a really extreme uh, weather we have, especially in winter and, uh, and summer. So for those who are outdoor workers, it's important that the employers uh, provide them with training, the right one, uh, water, given time out breaks and access to shade, right? And um, in Mexico, uh, we don't have these kind of situations. We don't face that because we have a different weather, right? But uh, here it's important that workers or everyone keeps an eye on the weather forecast. You know, stay hydrated and wearing um, light clothes and using sunscreen and those kind of things, right? To prevent accidents. And sometimes um, in the past, I used to think that um, undocumented workers where the, the ones could suffer, you know, from abuse at work. And that's not true. Um, for example, last year, we assisted 35 uh, migrant workers that they came here um, through uh, H2A visa, you know, for uh, that's a visa that allows, you know, workers, migrant workers to work here as um, agricultural workers and the h 2 v that is for um, construction workers. So we identified uh, 35 workers who um, had been um, victims, victims of labor trafficking here in Utah. And actually last year, last month, we, um, we assisted uh, another group of 50. Yes, so it's really common. Yeah, so we recommend them that before signing a contract, they make sure that um, they know about the company and what are gonna be the working conditions, the salary and hourly wages, wage. And also, I don't know, but um, we assess people many people uh, at the consulate. And sometimes we, um, they are not using, they are not working under the real name. And that's a huge problem if they have, if they have an accident or even to get any compensation of a kind of thing. So we um, recommend, you know, that they um, use the real name. And it's important that they read uh, carefully any document and that they don't sign uh, any paper if they don't know or understand uh, its content right. So, and <laughs> yeah, it is that they know that it is illegal to charge someone for offering employment, right? And <laughs> we highlight the last part that nobody can keep, you know, your identification documents or your visa, right? And that was the, the case uh, or that was uh, the situation, the, the case that we helped that here had. And those are some pictures when we uh, visit uh, migrant workers at their workplaces. And what about our labor cases? What do we call with labor rights? Well, uh, we are not lawyers, <laughs> and uh, given that we are a representation from a foreign uh, country, we have little to no legal capacity. So we connect connect Mexican nationals with our partners and authorities and institutions here in Utah. For example, uh, if we have a case of unpaid wages, we refer that person to the Utah Labor Commission, right? And also at the consulate, we provide the, the form, right? And we also have information about Utah small courts. 
But uh, of course, sometimes there are complex cases, right? So um, if the case has a vast amount of legal variability, then we are able to provide legal representation before courts, right? And we pay for the whole uh, process. And what about the labor rights quick? Yeah, actually, we uh, it takes it takes place in August. It's gonna be the last week, actually. And uh, what is our main objective? Uh, raise awareness of labor rights and the they understand um, what I what I mentioned at the beginning that regardless the the status we have rights right and also it's important because we work with um, a local organizations in the field so they can provide us with um, their insights and knowledge and we can improve our work right. And really important to, for us is to educate the community of what they need to do or what they can do to uh, defend their rights or prevent any abuse of work. Right? Um, of course, so those were our main objectives. So how do we achieve these objectives? Well, uh, it's important uh, to mention that the Labor Rights Week is, um, is built upon needs and wants that we at the consulate identified, you know, uh, in the Mexican community. And um, it is constructed in partnership with our partners. So um, we can like um, achieve a greater impact, right? And we also provide uh, certifications classes in, in partnership with some allies. And for this week, I think that we are working on providing uh, for the lift certification and how to use chemicals and as well about safety orientation. And something is missing. <laughs> yeah, so. Yes, we have an opening event. Uh, we have a small panel to discuss, you know, um, uh, sort of things with experts in the field. And we also uh, provide free legal advice, consultations at the consulate through the, the that week. We have a job fair and we do the, the job fair in partnership with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And last year, um, we uh, offered, well, 32 uh, organizations provided services um, during the job fair, right? And this is the last part. Please don't fall asleep. <laughs> uh, so Labor Rights Week, this year, uh, it's gonna take place from August 26th to 30, and the opening ceremony is gonna be on August 26th from 9 to 11 at um, AGC facilities. Uh, we are gonna have the job fair on August 28th from five to, in the evening, from five to seven. Uh, the, the, the days and times for the class and certifications uh, to be determined yet. And if you are interested, and I think you told me at the beginning, uh, Fabiana, that uh, you already worked, you know, with the consulate for this project. So, uh, but if anyone else is interested in joining us in this project, you can send me an email and of course, um, we have enough time, I think so, because it's gonna be at the end of the, the month. That's my information and thank you guys. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, I know that the Consulate Expo Conference is one of the most, you know, big important here, so I don't know if you have other questions. 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, in Utah? Yeah. No, we have just one, but uh, there are 53 consulates across the, the USA. Right. Um, so my question for you is, so mainly you guys provide all this information for the Mexican community. Do you guys provide information like this for like other countries, other countries uh, like this one? Yeah, we, um, given that all the financial resources that we um, we have and the, that we get are, let's say that come from the Mexican government, we cannot like give financial aid to others, um, to other workers, you know, um, from Guatemala or others country. Yeah, but when we do this kind of events, everybody can join us. And actually I was in charge of the community affairs department in the past. And um, we work with some community organizations in the educational, financial and health field. So uh, regardless of your nationality, you can come to the consulate and get information about those resources available in the community. Yeah, so let's say that we can now like assist other um, co-workers, well, workers from other, other nationality, nationalities, but uh, we can give the, the same information. Yeah. Yes. You mentioned that you have just recently 50 people that you found that were trafficked. Yes. How do you, like, what are the signs of that? Um, how do you report that? Yeah, a couple of, the, of them came to the consulate. Oh. Yeah, because they get, they got really scared. They didn't have even um, a safe uh, place to stay because the last, the last day uh, they didn't get uh, any call from the, the employer. So uh, just the manager uh, from the, the hotel where they were staying for those weeks. And they said that um, you should like leave, you know, the, the hotel because uh, nobody, you know, um, has paid, you know. So uh, in case that you don't leave, Today, we are going to call the police. So that's really crazy because most of them, you know that they are undocumented, right? But crazy thing for us because they, they are, let's say that the first like offer, job offer um, from that company was in Colorado. Yeah, so that's one of the common, let's say, techniques that these kind of um, companies uh, do is that uh, they move the, the co-workers to different places. So let's say that they don't have like this, uh, any supporting network, right? So let's say that they isolate the workers, right? So first, they started working in Colorado. Then um, the company moved then to Idaho. And from the beginning, they noticed that the payment was just like uh, half of the, 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 the promised, you know, income salary. But at the same time, they didn't want it to return to Mexico, right? So without anything, you know, so it's like my family needs, you know, um, my money. So we cannot like go back without anything, right? Yeah, so the way that we identified that is because they um, come to the consulate or um, I got a call actually last week and we are waiting for, uh, for yeah, for another group. Yes, yeah, yeah, because they don't sign a contract. So it's like, we don't have responsibility. That's what companies say, but they have, right? Yeah, so 
sometimes they don't even have their documents. Yeah, as I said, so it's crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have any assistance in helping um, lawyers and employees with the communication and teaching them English or their employee, employers Spanish and communicate better? At the workplace? Yes. Yeah, we provide. Out of the workplace so that we can communicate better because I'm hiring a lot of employees that do not speak English. So if I don't have friends where they're all the way on the floor, so it's on the phone. To me, sometimes that can be an unsafe situation. I would like to be able to teach them English and my supervisors Spanish or my operator Spanish, but this gets to be to where. I'm not sure, but do you offer that as an opportunity for them as they're here to be able to learn English? Okay, yeah. When we talk, then when they are temporary workers, you know, that um, that have come, you know, to the U.S. through a visa mm -hmm. as construction or agricultural workers. Um, let's say that it's complicated that they can attend any uh, English class classes, right? But um, we have a ventanilla de orientación educativa at the consulate. So it's like a building and we work with a community organization. So uh, we provide information about where they can go to continue their studies, uh, all the, where they can find uh, certifications, uh, also the GED, I think so. So we provide information about the, the resources available in the community at the consulate. And also we try to, um, let's say that we visit um, migrant workers at their workplaces. So um, let's say that we, firstly, our first step is to go, you know, to, um, how can I say it? Um, we know, let's say that we have like a list with all the, the names of the companies that, um, that hire uh, temporary workers from Mexico, but we don't know about others like um, companies that, um, that get, um, employment for uh, migrants here, right? So let's say that uh, when they are getting their uh, passport, we ask them like, uh, where are you working, right? If they get off that information, let's say that we are able with that to see, oh, there are many um, workers coming from this farm, from this company, and we get in touch with that uh, company and try to um, give them information about what we do, about the the the, the regulations and uh, rules, you know, in the field, right? So I don't know if that was your question about it. No, not exactly. <laughs> How would you find information and helping them so that they can learn English or Spanish? Just assistance on that. So could you have a web page? I mean, do you help them get classes to learn English um, when they come here? Or is there classes that they can go to so that they can learn English? Because when they're coming, I don't think the ones that I'm hiring said that they're not going, they may not be going through you. They may not even know of you, mm -hmm. okay? So they don't have passports. They, they have papers, but they're not, they don't have passports. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, there's things online where they can learn English, but. Do you have, I'm just asking if there's any assistance that you have that you could provide them to learn English or even an employer that wants to learn Spanish to go so we can communicate better? Mm -hmm. um, we were with the LDS charge and they have a program, you know, uh, it's a free program. Um, so they can like um, start learning English. So our main function is to give the information. And today, I think that nowadays, um, they are teaching uh, 
anyone who is interested in learning English at the consulate. I think that uh, on Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, so maybe we need to work a little more on that part. Yeah, because um, we, let's say that we have capacity, right? But we depends on our partners, right? So uh, if, let's say that maybe you, you have heard about Centro de la Familia and they have like um, offices and work yeah, in different parts across the, the state. So they also offer um, uh, English classes. So maybe we have to work a little more on that. So do you have it on your uh, web or can I contact you to find this information out of where these classes are? Yeah. So I can so, provide that for my employees? Um, yes. So also the, the head consul uh, give interviews, you know, for Telemundo and others, you know, in that that we stream on social media, right? To um, give information that what we do, what are the services, and what are and the organizations that are our partners, right? So if someone wants to uh, obtain information about any resources. Um, there is information on our web, web page. Uh, they can go to the, the consulate and ask directly, you know, at the Ventanilla um, Orientación Educativa. We work with um, Horizonte, Horizon, the Salt Lake Community College as well, uh, the University of Utah. So the thing here, I think that our main challenge is that that information um, goes directly, you know, to the right place, to the right um, person. So, yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I have one. Yes. It's my understanding that OSHA and we, the cost program yeah. that you watch, they don't have jurisdiction uh, with agricultural work. So, um, who would, like if there's a Mexican national working in an environment unsafe on a farm, for example, who would they report those hazards to? Could they start with you, Ash, and make a connection to the right agency? Or? Okay, uh, what we uh, tell them is that they can call directly, or uh, we have a contact, a direct contact in that organization. So when we get a case, we like let them know, right? And also, as I said, we provide a uh, legal assistance, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Maria, so much uh, for all the information. Uh, it's nice to know that uh, not only the Mexican consulate uh, work with the Mexican uh, community, but with other community as well. Uh, so if you guys have any questions or any like informations, like Donna was asking about the English classes and stuff, like we can always call the consulate and then uh, they can like guide us where to go. Um, for upcoming, uh, start with safety. Our next one is an emergency planning for your business. And it's going to be on September the 4th uh, at 10 a.m. here, or you guys can register online. Um, and then don't forget about our annual meeting on the 6th. And Women in Safety will be collecting food and school supplies. So please don't forget about that. Uh, you guys have no more questions? We'll stay safe. Yeah.